joined so far so thank you everyone for joining uh, today the topic that we are going to cover is uh, the glories of lord nityananda we've just uh, celebrated uh, the festival uh, on his appearance day so we're going to touch upon all the glories so uh, please uh, volunteer for uh, reading uh, reading sessions and then we can uh, move forward Thank you, Prabhu Hari Krishna. Please continue. Thank you very much for inviting me to your very wonderful association. So we have been invited to speak on the glories of Nityananda Prabhu. So who is Nityananda Prabhu is a important thing because spiritual life means to know who these personalities are and to get their mercy. So we are chanting daily the prayer, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, ah, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Shiva Shri, Kuru Bhakta Vrinda. These are called the Panchatattvas. So who is actually, of course, you may know Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as non-different from Krishna, but many are not familiar with Nityananda Prabhu's glories, you know. So since his appearance, they just happen to be Last, uh, was it when? I think it was last 14, no? Monday. Nityananda Trayodasi. Mm. 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 Yes. Mm. So we would like to speak about his glories. Huh? So to understand his glories, we have this very nice song by Narutam Das Thakur. So he is singing in this song, Nitai Pada Kamala. Koti Chandra Sisutala Echaya Jagata Jurai Teno Nitai Binebai Radha Krishna Pai Tenai Dridakore Daro Nitai Re Pai So the meaning of this verse The lotus feet of Lord Nityananda are a shelter where one will get the soothing moonlight not only of one but millions of moon. If the world wants to have real peace, it should take shelter of Lord Nityananda. Unless one takes shelter under the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, it will be very difficult for him to approach Radha and Krishna. If one actually wants to enter into the dancing party of Radha and Krishna, he must firmly catch hold of the lotus feet of Nityananda. Of course, when he sings, Che Sambandha Nai Jar Vritta Janma Gelo Tar Se Pasu Boro Durachar Nitayana Bolilo Mukhe Majilo Samsara Sukhe Vidyakule Ke Horibe Koribe Tar Anyone who has not established his relationship with Nityananda Prabhu is understood as spoiled as your valuable human life. Such a human life such a human being is actually an uncontrollable animal. Because he never uttered the holy name of Nityananda, he has become merged into so-called material happiness. What can his useless education and family tradition do to help him? Ankara mata hoye nitai pada pasariye asatyere satya korimani nitere karuna hebe prajarada krishna pabe been maddened after false prestige and identification of the body, one is thinking, oh, what is, what is Nityananda? What can he do for me? I don't care. The result is that he is accepting something false to be truth. If you actually want to approach the association of Radha and Krishna, you must first achieve the mercy of Lord Nityananda. When he is merciful towards you, then you will be able to approach Radha and Krishna. Therefore, you should firmly grab the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Nityayare charana satya tahara sevaka nitya nitaipada sada koro asa narutam boro dukhi nitai moro koro sukhi rauko ranga charane rapasa the lotus feet of Nityananda are not illusion, they are a fact. One who engages in the transcendental loving service of Nityananda is also transcendental. Always try to catch hold of the lotus feet of Nityananda, this Narottam Das, 
is very unhappy. Therefore, I am praying to Lord Nityananda to make me happy. My dear Lord, please keep me close to your lotus feet. So this is the song that Narottam Das Thakur has, song, has sung. So here, the very interesting thing is the purport given by Srila Prabhupada. So we're going to read the purport and then try to explain as we go along. <clears throat> So this is a very nice song sung by Narutam Das Thakur. He advises that Nitai Pada, the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, Kamala means lotus and Pada means feet, are the shelter where one will get soothing moonlight, not of only one, but of millions of moon. We can just imagine the aggregate total value of the soothing shine of millions of moon. In this material world, Jagat, which is a pro progressing towards hell, there's a blazing, there's, a, there's always a blazing fire and everyone is struggling hard without finding peace. Therefore, if the world wants to have peace, they should take shelter under the lotus feet of Nityananda, which are cooling like the shining of millions of moon. Juraya means relief. If one actually wants relief from the struggle of existence and actually wants to extinguish the blazing fire of material pangs, Narottam Das Thakur advised, please take shelter of Lord Nityananda. See that? So here you can see this material well is not a very nice place. Hmm? Everyone knows. Everyone is feeling the pain, hmm? correct? So here you can see. Tapatre yena bila sita se gore, Santa piam manasya se bhava, davani ha, Pashyamina che charanam tavangiri, dandvata, patrat, amrutabi varshad. My dear Lord, for one who is cruelly burned, you see this word here, cruelly burned in the blazing fire of material miseries. So we all are being burned, cruelly burned. It is not that we are having a fine time, you know. No. That's why Krishna also said this material world is Dukhalyam. He never said it is Sukhalyam. Yeah, we have some happiness. That happiness is it is called temporary happiness. There is no real happiness in this material world. You know? And not only there is no happiness, in misery is when we are burning. This is called burning. Having fallen into the network of material existence, I do not see any possible shelter other than your two lotus feet which are a show of nectar, extinguish the fire of suffering. So you see, the same thing that Narutam Das Thakur is saying, that the lotus feet of Nityananda are the only juraye, juraye may only relief. Huh? And to get rid of this burning effect, we must get a cooling effect. I think if you are not, uh, you have to mute yourself, huh? because if you don't mute yourself, the, the, the vibration of your mic will come onto the recording. Huh? Who is Mr. J. Raja? You can advise him, please. Uh, hello? Yeah, please, um, everybody, please mute yourselves. Now, when there is the opportunity to talk, we can unmute. Thank you very much. So this is how we can understand. So there is a burning effect and a cooling effect must be uh, acquired. And the cooling effect, as here in this song, it says it comes from the lotus feet. Uh, whose lotus feet? Nityananda's lotus feet, which is like millions and millions of moon. Everybody know the moon is cooling and the sun is very hot. See, the comparison is giving. Hmm. So this relief is to take shelter of the Lord. Ah. 
again samsara sindhum samsara sindhu means ocean of uh, this material ocean uh, samsara means birth and death cycle of birth and death material existence is like an ocean that is difficult extremely difficult to cross hmm so not only it is cruelly been burned not only we are cruelly been burned but we are stuck here Uh, difficult to get out is not possible to cross hmm the condition so having fallen in this ocean ah uh, which is not cool again you see the word it not cool it burned them ah uh, how does it burn them with the fire of misery what is that misery bird died old age disease a uh, problem from the mind problem from other people mind problem from the demigods hmm so nothing but problem this whole material earth is full of anxiety that's why krishna again i stress this is place of dukha this is not place of sukha krishna said god already declared it that is a miserable place then what do you and i can do hmm so we are trying to i say adjust our situation we are trying to some or other you know although it's so miserable we are trying to you know uh, make the best of it no hmm? this is our foolishness this is our foolishness therefore without taking shelter of the lotus feet of lord nityananda which is comparable to millions of moon then there's no relief there's no relief you cannot say i want to go direct to krishna that that's not possible yeah krishna say anyone who say is my devotee he is not my devotee krishna said already in that uh, adi puran no hmm but someone who say is my devotee or my devotee ah then is my devotee so krishna also not to accept you you know just because you buy a deity and picture of krishna and you try to chant hari krishna and you think that you can go direct uh, that's foolishness you of course you have a spiritual master that's the first thing if you don't have a spiritual master forget it there's no spiritual life ah so the mercy of the spiritual master then you go to the mercy of hmm then you go to the mercy of uh, the goswami i mean the parampara the, the previous acharyas then you go to huh you go to then you go to the six goswamis correct then you from six goswami you go to advaita acharya hmm then from advaita acharya you go to nityananda prabhu ha eh? from the panchatattva nityananda prabhu by going to nityananda prabhu then you will get the mercy of chaitanya mahaprabhu who is not different from radha and krishna then you can develop the love radha krishna paite nai you understand it is not like you whimsically you know the krishna consciousness is not a whimsical process it is a process that you must acharya upasanam you must follow in the guidance of the acharyas hmm so that's why in this verse भक्तजन पर्ता ना मे भक्ता ते जन मक्ता चे भक्त ते मे भक्त तमो मत दिस इज फ्रॉम आदिपुराण लॉर्ड कृष्ण इज टेलिंग अर्जुन दो मै डायरेक्ट डिवोडीज एक्चुअली नॉट मै डिवोडीज दिस इज दर्ड हि एक्चुअली नॉट मै डिवोडीज but those who are devotees of my servant are factually my devotees this is a very important point you know 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also said, huh? I am nothing but a seven of the seven of the seven of the seven huh? of Krishna, who is the Lord of the Gopis. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us how to become the seven of the seven of the seven. So you cannot just think that you can just go bypass and go straight to hmm? Krishna. Hmm? So in this regard, we will go. I think, wait one second. Huh? What we will do? We will read the. What will be the result of accepting the shelter of the lotus feet of Nityananda? He says, He no nittai bine bai. Unless one takes the shelter under the shade of the lotus feet of Nityananda, Radha Krishna paite nai. Is it this word here? Hmm? Radha Krishna paite nai. It is, will be very difficult for him to approach Radha and Krishna. Impossible. The aim of this Krishna conscious movement to enable us to approach Radha and Krishna and associate with the Supreme Lord in sublime pleasure dance. Narottam Das Thakur advised that if one actually wants to enter into the dancing party of Radha and Krishna, you must accept the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Of course, this verse I've spoken so many times, this is actually the third, third or fourth time I'm speaking. And there's, I spoke about the story of Raghunath Das Goswami, how he went, uh, tried to escape, and then he could not escape. And finally, the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu, hmm, uh, who placed his lotus feet on his head, he managed to escape from his family uh, and joined the party of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is by Nityananda's grace. Hmm? So similarly, today I'm going to show you another pastime, and this is explained here. This is explained in this uh, Adi Lila. Lord Chaitanya is same as Lord Krishna, and Lord Nityananda is Balaram. Lord Nityananda fulfills all of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire. The ocean of Lord Nityananda's glory is infinite and unfathomable. Only by his, his mercy can I touch even a drop of it. This is spoken by Krishna Das Kaviraja, who is happened to be his disciple. Please listen to another glory of his mercy. We are talking about Nityananda's mercy. He had made a fallen living entity climb to the highest limit. Is there, see, this is another very, uh, this is a uh, testimony. How Kaviraj is saying, he has made a fallen living entity climb to the highest limit. Hmm? So how? This is going to give the example of his whole life. To disclose it is not proper, for it should be kept confidential as the Vedas Yet, I shall speak of it to make his mercy known to all. So, some kind of devotees have personal realization and so many pastimes, they don't like to, you know, speak about it publicly and, you know, because then they may get proud. But here, Krishna Das Kaviraj says, no, I want to speak about it because in this way I can expose how glorious and merciful he is, Lord Nityananda Ram. Oh, oh, Lord Nityananda, I write of your mercy out of great exaltation. Please forgive me for my offenses. You see how he is uh, thinking and writing. That by glorifying Nityananda Prabhu, sometimes devotees don't like to be glorified. So he says, please forgive me for my offenses. See how the, how the, 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 the what do we say, the character, you know, the etiquette. Lord Nityananda Prabhu had a servant named Miniketan, Miniketan Ramdas, who was a reservoir of love. 
At my house, there was a Sankirtan day and night, and therefore he visited uh, there, having been invited. Absorbing emotional love, he sat in my courtyard, and all the Vaishnavas bowed down at his feet. How exalted he must be, hmm? being a servant of Nityananda Prabhu. In a joyful mood of love of God, he sometimes climbed upon the shoulder of someone offering obeisances, and sometimes he struck others with his flute or mildly slapped them. This is one of his pastimes, huh? Miniketan Ramdas. When someone saw the eyes of Miniketan Ramdas, tears would automatically flow from his own eyes. So a constant show of tears flowed from the eyes of Miniket and Ramdas. Sometimes there were eruptions of ecstasy like the Kadamba flowers on some part of his body, and sometimes one limb would be stunned while another would be trembling. So these are spiritual ecstasies. Huh? So then there was a one respectable Brahmana named Sri Gunaranava Mishra was serving the deity. When Miniketan was seated in the yard, this Brahmana did not offer him respect. Seeing this, Sri Ramdas became angry and spoke. Here we find the second Ramahasana Sutta who did not stand to show honor when, Lord, when he saw Lord Brahma, Balaram. So in the past times of uh, this, the Lord Balaram actually killed him because he did not show respect to him. And then, of course, he seated his Sutta Goswami, his son, who then spoke the Maha Srimad Bhagavatam to all the sages at Nameshvanya. After saying this, he danced and sang to his heart content, but the Brahmana did not become angry, for he was serving Lord Krishna. At the end of the festival, Miniketan Ramdas went away, offering his blessing to everyone. At that time, we had some controversy. At that time, he had some controversy with my brother. Uh, what is the controversy? My brother had firm faith in Lord Chaitanya, but only a dim glimmer of faith in Lord Nityananda. See the thing? He was only accepting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because he saying he's not different from Radha and Krishna. But he did not have any faith in Nityananda Prabhu. Hmm. Knowing this, Sri Ramdas felt unhappy in his mind and then I then rebuked my brother. I then rebuked my brother because this brother, uh, he, he, he did not care for Nityananda. These two brothers, I told him, are like one body. They are identical manifestation. If you do not believe in Lord Nityananda, you will fall down. You see this? If you do not believe in Lord Nityananda, then you will fall down. Hmm. It's very serious. If you have faith in one but disrespect the other, your logic is like the logic of accepting half an end. The, the half and end philosophy means that because the head is giving, uh, no, sorry, the backside is giving the eggs and the head is eating and taking, you know, food, you know. So because it's costly, uh, food, uh, but the uh, backside is giving the eggs. So I will cut the chicken, uh, throw away the head and keep the backside because that way I will get all the eggs, no? This is called half the hand philosophy. It, is be, it would be better to be an atheist by slighting both brothers than a hypocrite by believing in one and slighting the others. It is an argument. Better you reject both. You know? How is it that you accept one and you reject the other? This is like a hypocrite. Sri Ramdas broke his flute in anger and went away. And at that time, my brother fell down. So, oh, if you don't accept Nityananda Prabhu, uh, then the consequence of that, you will fall down. This is shown here. Hmm? 
He has first described the power of the servants of Lord Nityananda. Now I shall describe another, another characteristic of his mercy. That night, Lord Nityananda appeared in my in, to me in a dream because of my good quality of chastising my brother. In the village of Jamatapur, which is near Nayhati, Lord Nityananda appeared to me in a dream. I fell at his feet offering my obeisances and then he placed his own lotus feet upon my head. Arise, get up, he told me. Huh? He told me. He told me. Huh? Again and again. Upon arising, I was greatly astonished to see his beauty. He had a glossy blackish complexion and his tall, strong, heroic uh, stature made him seem like a Cupid himself. You know? See how the Lord, I mean, how the beauty of the Lord was described, you know? So this is this is how 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 the the beauty of the Lord is also described. So God is not impersonal, you know. Yeah. You see, He had a beautiful form, hands, arms, and legs. His eyes is like lotus flowers. He wore a silk cloth, his silk turban on his head. Uh, try to understand, God is not impersonal. God is personal. And the beauty of him is described. That's why when we speak about the lotus feet of Nityananda, we are speaking of his lotus feet. It is not that he has no feet. It is all imaginary. No, no. He is a personality and is full of is an expansion of Balaram. I mean, Nityananda Prabhu is in non-different from Balaram. Balaram hoilo nitai. Eh? So then, he wore golden earrings on his ears and golden armlets and bangle. He wore tinkling anklers on his feet and a garland of flowers around his neck. His body was anointed with sandalwood pap and he was nicely decorated with tilak. God is putting tilak. Huh? Yeah, my tilak is worn out already. I should have put one on. Sorry. His mind surprised, surprised those of a maddened elephant. His face was more beautiful than millions upon millions of moon. Just now we heard his lotus feet is so cooling like the millions and millions of moon. And here his face is also like a beautiful like millions upon millions of moon. Huh? Can you ask, uh, please, to mute? Huh? And his teeth were like pomegranate seeds because of his chewing beetle. See how the description of even his teeth, when you see pomegranate seed, uh, Prabhu, can you please coordinate, ask them to mute themselves yes uh, Lytton Prabhuji please uh, mute yourselves if you're able to hear me so yeah, is it's not muting so his teeth is like pomegranate, and you look at pomegranate seed, they are white in the center and around them are all pinkish in color. Hmm? So look how beautiful the seed are. And his teeth are all like that, you know, so beautiful to look at. Uh, because they are chewing betel nut, no? His body moved to and fro, right and left, for he was absorbed in ecstasy. He chanted Krishna, Krishna in a deep voice. Nityananda Prabhu is chanting Krishna's name. 
his red stick. He had his red stick moving in his hand. He seemed like a maddened lion all around the four sides of it were bumblebees. Hmm? All round his four sides of his feet were bumblebees. His devotees dressed like coward boys, surrounded his feet like so many bees, also chanted Krishna, Krishna, absorbed in ecstatic love. Some of them played horns and flutes and others danced and sang. Some of them offered betel nut, others waved chamara fans about him. Thus I saw such opulence in North Nityananda Swarup. His wonderful form, qualities, and pastimes are all transcendental. I was overwhelmed with transcendental ecstasy, not knowing anything else. Then Lord Nityananda smiled and spoke to me as follows. Oh, my dear Krishna Das, do not be afraid. Go to Vrindavan, for there you will attain all things. After saying this, he directed me toward Vrindavan by waving his hand. Then he disappeared with his associates. I fainted and fell to the ground. My dream broke and then I regained consciousness and saw that morning had come. I thought about what I have seen and heard and concluded that the Lord had ordered me to proceed to Vrindavan at once. That very second, I started for Vrindavan, and by his mercy, I have reached there in great happiness. See? So what happened? All glory, all glory to Lord Nityananda Balaram, by whose mercy I have attained shelter, the transcendental abode of Vrindavan. So he went to Vrindavan. So we are going to Vrindavan, then he got the mercy, of course, we'll be reading of the Goswamis, especially Rupa and Sanatan and Raghunath. And he wrote this book, this book that now we are reading. This is written by him by the mercy of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. You see, this is how things work, you know. Things doesn't work just simply by our mental you know, speculation. <clears throat> we have to always be <coughs> uh, waiting for the mercy of Lord our spiritual master of Lord Nityananda, the, 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 the Acharyas, the Goswamis. I mean, this is how we go. <coughs> uh, not that we just keep Krishna and that's it, you know. <coughs> all glory, all glory to the merciful Lord Nityananda, by whose mercy I have attained shelter, the lotus feet of Rupa and Sanatan. So you see, he got the shelter of Rupa, Goswami and Sanatan. By his mercy, I have attained the shelter of great personality of Raghunath Das Goswami, and by his mercy I have found the refuge of Swarup Damodar. Hmm. Uh, so this is how things work. Hmm. Anyone desiring to become expert in the service of Sri Radha and Krishna should always aspire to be under the guidance of Surup Damodar Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami to come under the protection of the Goswami. One must get the mercy and grace of Nityananda Prabhu. The author has tried to explain this fact in these two verses. You understand? By the mercy of Sanatan Goswami, I have learned the com com final conclusion of devotional service. And by the grace of Rupa Goswami, I have tasted the highest nectar of devotional service. Hmm. So I would advise you to read the purport. Eh? All glories, all glories to the lotus feet of Nityananda, by whose mercy I have attained Sisi Radha, Radha Govinda. See, again, by the mercy of Nityananda, uh, I have attained Lord Radha and Krishna. Just now we sang, without Nityananda's mercy, Radha, Krishna, Naite, Pai. It's not possible to get the mercy of uh, Radha and Krishna. Hmm. I am more sinful than Jaga and Madai, even lower than the worms in the stool. Perhaps you are not knowing, Jaga and Madai are two Brahmins who have fallen, fallen down and they were do, doing all kind of things that you can possibly imagine. Womanizing, uh, they were 
alcoholics they were you know drunk they were thieves they were they were really low and they were misusing women hmm. so that's why here it says jagai mada is so sinful of course the lord nityananda went and delivered them he made them chan you know he made them to surrender but they refused to surrender so they took their liquor bottle and they broke the uh, liquor pots and broke the head of nityananda and at that time chaitanya mahaprabhu heard the news and he rushed there to kill them but nityananda prabhu pleaded with the lord that you came to deliver such people and if you kill them then what is the best, what is the meaning of your mission patita pavana hetu so then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu then forgive them and he ordered them that they should not do it again so that was the condition see so anyone who hears my name loses the result of his pious activity anyone who utters my name becomes sinful although krishna das kaviraj is so great you see how he is projecting himself i am lower than jaga and madai and if anyone chant my name he will lose all his piety anyone utters my name becomes sinful see how he projecting himself as the lowest of the low so this is the mood of a devotee a devotee cannot think that he is the best of the best that anyone chants his name will become purified see that is the devotee consciousness devotee cannot think otherwise uh, if he thinks otherwise then is fallen yeah who in this world but lord nityananda could show his mercy to such an abominable abominable person as me is glorifying nityananda because he is intoxicated intoxicated by ecstatic love and is an incarnation of mercy he does not distinguish between good and bad no of course god no he delivers all those who fall down before him therefore he is delivered such a sinful and fallen person as me so here hmm? krishna das kaviraj is explaining the mercy of lord nityananda that if he, if you go to him he will never reject you how fallen you are although i am sinful and i have most fallen he has comforted upon me the lotus feet of rupa goswami see by the mercy of krishna you get the spiritual master and by the mercy of the spiritual master you get krishna i am not fit to speak all this confidential words but my visiting lord madan mo madanna gopal and lord govinda lord madanna gopal the chief deity of vrindavan is the enjoyer of the rasa dance is directly the son of king of vrja he enjoys the rasa dance with shrimati radharani sri lalita and others he manifests himself with the cupid of cupids wearing yellow garments and decorated with flower garland lord krishna appearing among the gopis with his smiling lotus feet look directly like the charm of the heart of the cupids this is the quotation from shriman bhagavan with radha and lalita serving him on his two sides he attracts the heart of all of his own sweetness the mercy of lord nityananda showed me sri madana mohan and gave me sri madana mohan as my lord and master see how does this happen he granted to one as low as me the sight of lord govinda words cannot describe this nor is it fit to be disclosed on an altar made of gems in the principal temple of vrindavan amid the forest of desire tree lord govinda the son of king of raja sits upon a throne of gems and manifests his full glory and sweetness thus enchanting the entire world his left side is shrimati radharani and his personal friend and with them lord govinda enjoys the rasalila and many other pastimes lord balaram sitting on his lotus seat in his own abode always meditates on him and worships him with the mantra consisting of the 18 syllables 
For those people who are chanting the Gayatri mantra, they will know this is 18 syllable mantra. Hmm? Klim Krishnaya, Govindaya, Gopi Jana, Vallavaya, Swaha. This is the and, ch and, and is chanted by Balaram, by Nityananda Prabhu. Anyone in the 14 worlds meditates upon him and all the denizens of Vaikuntha sings of his qualities and pastimes. The goddess of fortune is attracted by sweetness, which Srila Rupa Goswami has described in this way. My dear friend, if you are indeed attached to your worldly friends, do not look at the smiling face of Lord Govinda as he stands on the bank of the Yamuna at Kesi Ghats. Casting sight-long glances, he places his flute to his lips, which seem like newly bolsome twigs. His transcendental body bending in three places appear very bright in the moonlight. So this is a very important verse. If you are interested in worldly life, uh, if you are interested in material life, then do not look at the smiling face of Lord Govinda. Why? Because you look at him, then you have to say goodbye to your material life. That's the meaning of this verse. Without a doubt, he, directly, he is directly the son or king of Raja. Only a fool will consider him as a statue. For that, for that offense, he cannot be liberated. Rather, he will fall into a terrible hellish condition. What more should I say? In other words, anyone who thinks that the deity and the Lord are different, then he will fall down. Those who, though, therefore, who can describe the mercy of Lord Lotus Feet of Lord Him, uh, Lotus Feet of Him, Lord Nityananda? by whom I have sheltered, I have attained the shelter of this Lord Govinda. All the groups of Vaishnavas who live in Vrindavan are absorbed in chanting the all auspicious name of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are the life and soul of these Vaishnavas who do not know anything but devotional service to Sri, Sri Radha and Krishna. The dust and shade of the lotus feet of the Vaishnavas have been granted to this fallen soul by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Nityananda said, in Vrindavan, all things are possible. Here I have explained his brief statement in detail. That's why devotees are asked to take shelter of Vrindavan. But the five things we have to do, one of it is to take shelter of the holy place. I, I have attained all this by coming to Vrindavan and this was made possible by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. I have described my own story without reservation. The attributes of Lord Nityananda making me like madman forced me to write these things. The glories of Nityananda's transcendental abuse are unfathomable. Even Lord Sesa with thousands of mouths cannot find his limits. So this is, see, he always prays to praying on the Lotus to Rupa and Raghunath, only desiring their mercy. I, Krishna Das, narrates Sri Chaitanya, Charitamrita, following in his footsteps. So you see, now we have described the glory of how taking shelter of Nityananda Prabhu, one gets the highest benefit, Radha and Krishna love. And on the other hand, you can see that Krishna Das Kaviraj brother, he rejected Nityananda and he soon after fell down. So these are two stories, I mean examples of how one should act. One example, it shows if you neglect, you get drastic consequence. On the other hand, if you accept, then you see how you become glorious. Hmm? So that's why he says, if you heno nitai bine bai radha krishna paite nai. So if you don't get the mercy of Nityananda, then going to Radha and Krishna is impossible. He then he says, se sambandha nahi. Sambandha means connection or contact. Anyone who has not contact or relationship with Nityananda is, to, is understood to have spoiled his human birth. 
another song narutam das says hari hari bifale janama koya enu anyone who does not approach radha and krishna through a relationship with nityananda has uselessly spoil his life hmm prata means useless janma means life tara means this and sambandha means relationship anyone who does not make a relationship with nityananda prabhu is simply spoiling the boom of his human life eh yeah? why is he spoiling it se pasu boro durachar so see this is very important se means that pasu means animal and durachar means misbehave or the most misbehave without elevation to krishna consciousness through the mercy of chaitanya nityananda life is simply spoiled in the animal propensity of sense gratification narottam das takur says that ordinary animals can be tamed but when a human being is animalistic having only animal propensity he is most horrible for he cannot be tamed hmm he cannot be tamed see ah huh? so this is very very important point hmm if a person does not accept nityananda prabhu he cannot get radha and krishna love then you may ask this question as he says what what what, what who cares you know if i don't get radha and krishna what is the what i mean i don't think any loss but no that if you leave and the life of simply trying to enjoy the senses then without the mercy of the lord your life will become like an animal you see this point uh, it is not that because you don't worship radha and krishna so what you know i can go on with my life no if you don't accept then you will live like an animal that is the, the meaning not that you excuse the what 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 animal it says here eating sleeping mating defending are the qualities that are found in the animal as well as the human ahara nidra bhaya maituna samanyam pasu bir nirnam same same pasu bir nirnam and pasu and the human being name same samanyam but dharmam hina pasu bir saman the difference is that if the human being don't engage in the process of krishna consciousness dharma then he is simply animal dui pada pasu if you don't get sap the lotus feet of nityananda prabhu and get to develop love for krishna uh, you simply will be engaged in sense gratification and that consequence will be leading you to become an animal you know human life if it goes on that path it's very pathetic you know you can see here hmm when one's mind and senses are attracted to sense objects for enjoyment the mind becomes agitated as a result of continually thinking of sense objects one's real consciousness becomes lost then like the water in a lake that is gradually sucked up by big grass straws on his bank you dry up yeah when one deviates from his original consciousness he loses the capacity to remember his previous position or recognizes present one once remembrance is lost all knowledge acquired is based on false foundation when this occurs learned scholars consider the soul as lost that is this point ah loss hmm 
right? Because it goes on saying, there is no stronger obstruction to one's self-interest than thinking other subject matters to be more pleasing than one's self-realization. So to think of other things as more important than Krishna consciousness, he is becoming an animal. Understand? He is becoming an animal. See? For human society, constantly thinking of how to earn money and apply it for sense gratification brings about the distraction of everyone interests. When one becomes devoid of knowledge and devotional service, he enters into the species of life like those of trees and stone. Even this is worse. This is lower than animals. Lo uh, Lower, lower than the animal is the bird. Lower than the bird is the insects. And lo lower than that is the trees. And lower that is that becomes, you know, the, the aquatics, the fishes. So you see how dangerous it is. We cannot think that, no, it's all right, no. Okay, you, you have your beliefs, you have your... You know, it's your thing, you know. I'll do my thing, you know. This is the result of following the crazy mind. Trying to enjoy the senses. The consequence is to become trees and so on. And you cannot deny that. You cannot say this is all bogus. Because there are trees there. So many trees there. Yeah? And each tree has a soul. And whose soul is in those trees? Huh? Whose soul? Those people who are behaving like this? This is how they become trees. Just like uh, Manigreva and Nalakwara, the two sons of uh, Kuvera, they were running around naked, enjoying the senses, becoming intoxicated. Uh, and then Narada curse. He said, Because you, since you don't know how to use your, your, your valuable human life, I mean demigod life, better you become trees. So you see, they ended up at trees. Of course, they were blessed that they saw Krishna. That's another thing. But you become tree, you fall down. Hmm. So all these people who are trying to run around naked, uh, less cloth on their body, ah, there's going to be very dangerous consequence. That's why the, the, we are in our culture, we are fully covered. Uh, we are dressed properly. Everything is, you know, proper culture and standard. Uh, but the, West, the, the, the materialistic life, they all are trying to become naked. As Prabhupada said, always trying to attract people to the lower part of your body. And what will be the effect? You become tree. No need clothes. You can stand naked for thousands of years. No problem. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Huh? Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. So therefore, anybody is intelligent, they should be very careful. Those who are too strongly desire to cross the ocean in Nisain must not associate with the mode of ignorance for hedonistic activities are the greatest obstruction to realization of religious principle, economic development, regulated sense purification, and at last, liberation. And if you want to get liberated, then we must take shelter of the lotus feet of Nityananda Ram. Hmm. Of this thing, uh, out of these four principles, namely religion, economic development, sense gratifying, and liberation, Liberation has to be taken very seriously. Ah. The other three subject to destruction, but the stringent, of, stringent law of nature death. You understand? Having obtained human life, you must find the reason to escape. Not that simply we go live like an animal. Hmm? So if we go in that direction, then you live like an animal, naturally next life you'll become animal. Uh, no doubt about that. Huh? Again here, again here the same point is stressed. 
Whole oh, Bhagavadam, this thing is thrust. Due to ignorance, the materialistic person does not know anything but the real self-interest, the auspicious path in life. He is simply bound to material enjoyment by lusty desires and all his plans are made for this purpose. For temporary sense gratification, such a person creates a society of envy and due to this mentality, he plunges the ocean of suffering. Such a foolish person does not even know about this. This is another thing. He's lost. He doesn't know. He doesn't care. Hmm? Right? So you see how, how the whole Shastra is warning us. Don't think that you can stay without God consciousness or Krishna consciousness. That you think that you don't need God, as many people are going in that direction. They are into atheism. Whereas in the modern age now, we have superseded God, you know, we don't require God now. Can you imagine the terminology they use? Huh? Can you imagine that? Hmm? Huh? Sainli Udava, a person bereft of real intelligence, that means Krishna consciousness, is considered to have lost everything. Deviated from the actual purpose of his life, he becomes dull, just like a dead person. He becomes dull like a dead person. Non different, non different. Yeah. A living person who is not in Krishna consciousness is considered dead, although living. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Because of absorption in sense gratification, one cannot recognize himself or others. Living uselessly in ignorance like a tree, one is merely breathing just like a bellow. Hmm? So try to understand the consequence of not accepting the lotus feet of Nityananda Ram. You cannot get Radha and Krishna. On the contrary, you go into materialistic consciousness which will make you really, eventually you bring you down to lower than you know plant tree animals hmm? not only that see how it works huh? I have said this many times uh, you see here whatever spiritual thing you have cultivated hmm? Whatever spiritual thing you cultivated by not accepting Nityananda Prabhu, uh, you will also lose it. The illusory material nature attracts the minute living entity to embrace her, and as a result, he becomes a composer's form, composer of her colleague. Subsequently, he loses all his spiritual qualities and must undergo repeated deaths. Understand, he loses his spiritual qualities. Whatever he had got, piety is gone. So please take it very seriously. Ah, this is all not some just because you come to the to this class and therefore you're hearing this and that. No, no, no. That's why you have to go to saintly personalities to hear the secrets of how to make progress. And how not to degrade? Ah, degradation of the soul. As Krishna told Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, your actions are not leading you to, to, to going upward. Your actions are leading to degradation of the soul. Hmm. So please, uh, take this thing very seriously. And try to understand. No? So here he says here, ordinary cats uh, and even tiger can be tamed. If a human being goes out of his way and neglects the human activity of Krishna consciousness, 
his intelligence will be misused for animal propensity and it's very be very difficult for him to tame him very difficult for it will be very difficult to tame him that's why they say the guy is lost finish cannot be unless again you get the mercy of the devotees again if we get the mercy of the devotee yes but if he doesn't get the mercy of the devotee and usually when he go to sans gratification is lost not only lost he become very blasphemous also he will offend the devotee number one people he will offend is the devotees only just like jaga and mada they were gone they in fact they went to the to the extent of even hurting nitenanda ram that is how the consciousness goes they hate anyone who is religious ah uh, like hiranya kashipu ravana they don't like religious people they simply arrest them they kind of a, you know they always harming them no parlad maharaj what was his fault he simply chanted hare krishna and for no reason the father wanted to kill him the father wanted to kill him hmm see how a enactman of state laws cannot make a thief an honest man because his heart is polluted he cannot be tamed every man sees that a person commits criminal offenses is punished by the government and also in spiritual injunction punishment in hell is mentioned but despite hearing from the scripture and seeing the action of the state law the demon demonic cannot be tamed guys he doesn't care you know the demonic person thinks that he is so great he doesn't care who god what god there's no god hmm? you know that's how he is thinking and then it's here This is how he is thinking. Asatyam apratistaham te jagat ahur aniswaram apas aparaspara sambhutam kem anyat kama hai tukam. They say that this world is unreal with no foundation and no God in control. they say it is produce of sex desire and has no cause other than lust this is what they say huh? there is no god there is no nothing here. i am god this is what he say is he he is saying he is god he is the controller hmm? following such con- conclusion the demonic go lost to themselves who have no intelligence engage in unbeneficial horrible work man to destroy the world and see here there is no god taking shelter of insatiable lust and absorbed in conceit of pride and false pity the demonic thus illusion are always found to unclean work attracted by the impermanent this is how they think they believe to gratify the senses the prime necessity of human civilization thus until the end of life the anxiety is immeasurable bound by a network of hundreds of thousands of desires and absorbed in lust and anger they secure money by illegal means for sense gratification they'll do anything and everything just to get the money hmm correct this is how they think idam adya maya labdam imam prapse manoratam idam asitam api me bhavishyate punardanam asav maya hat satru अनिसे चापरम आपी ईश्वरोहम ईश्वरोहम सित ईश्वरोहम अहम भोगी सितोहम बलवन सुखी दिस इज द थिंग ही सेइंग ईश्वर आई एम गॉड यू नो आई एम द एंजॉयर आई एम परफेक्ट आई एम फुल ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ आद्यो आद्यो भी जानम वन आस्मिन को अन्योस्ती सादृश्यो मया 
अक्षय दास्या मोदी आज्ञान विमोहित The demonic person thinks so much wealth do I have today? I will gain more according to my skin. So much is mine now. It will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy, and I have killed him. And my other enemies will also be killed. I am the lord of everything. I am the enjoyer. I am perfect, powerful, and happy. Ah, I am the richest man, surrounded by aristocratic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall give some charity, and thus I shall rejoice. And this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance. They say, "I cannot tame them." That's impossible. Yeah. So try to understand how one's consciousness become polluted. Hmm. So there is no good qualities in them. You cannot develop this kind of good qualities by all this kind of methods. Good quality can only come by the association of devotees. Ah, uh, you cannot come by any other methods. Ah. Uh. यशेस्ति भक्ति भगवती अखिंचना सर्वेस्त गुना तथा समस्त सुर हरा अभक्त से कुतोत्म गुना मनोरतिना सती दाहवतो बहि ऑल द डेमेगाज एंड द एक्सल्टेड क्वालिटी सच अ रिलीजन नॉलेज डिनाउंसिएशन बिकम मैनिफेस्ट इन द बॉडी ऑफ वन विद डेवलप अनअलॉय डिवोशन For the supreme personality of God, it Vasudeva. So, in other words, you can develop all the exalted qualities of demigod, huh? unless and until you worship the Lord. Lord, unless you take up this God consciousness. On the other hand, a person devoid of devotional service and engaged in materialistic activities has no good qualities. Is that? Anyone who engages in the mental speculation and doing material activity has no good qualities. No matter how much moral, morally upright and all that, it doesn't work unless you take up devotional service. Even if he is at practicing this so-called mystic yoga or the honest endeavor of entertaining his family and relative, he must be driven by his own mental speculation and must be engaged in the service of the Lord. external energy how can there be any good quality in such a man he cannot have any good quality the mental speculators cannot have any good quality forget it that is not possible until and unless you engage in the service of the lord yes that means you become tame this untamed animal they cannot get anything any good thing nothing Hmm. So the difference. That's why Nityananda Prabhu we recommend to worship him. Then yes, all good qualities of the demigods and the exalted all will come to you. Hmm. But the sense gratification. Eh? You know, we are thinking. Every one of us are thinking like that. Actually, that is how we have been trained. You know, all of us are crazy. We are trained like that. You know, hmm? we are trained in this way. This is all it is. Our so-called training from birth. This is what it is. My dear Lord, people in general want to be elevated to higher planetary system for long duration of life, opulence, and enjoyment. But I have seen all of this through the activities of my father. When my father was angry, and he laughed sarcastically at the demigods, they were immediately vanquished simply by seeing the movement of his eyebrows. Yet my father was so powerful, was now being vanquished by you within a moment. Finish. So all this thing that we are aspiring, finish within a moment. 
You understand? He was so powerful. Nobody was more powerful than him. He was more powerful than the demigods. They were frightened of him. That much uh, powerful power he had. But it was all finished when Iranian, when Narishinga Dev came and ripped him apart. Everything was finished for him. That's why Prahlad is saying, what is the use of all this thing? In a moment, it is finished. My dear Lord, now I have complete experience concerning the worldly of opulence, mystic power, longevity and other material pleasures enjoyed by all living entities from Lord Brahma down to an end. As powerful time, you destroy them all. Therefore, because of my experience, I do not wish to possess any of them. My dear Lord, I request you to place, to place me in touch with your pure devotee and let me serve him as a sincere servant. This is the best, highest thing you can do to become, to, 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 to get in touch with the pure devotee and serve him as a sincere servant. There's nothing higher than this. So I Krishna said this now. Ah, someone who is a servant of my servant, oh, is very dear to me. There's nobody more dear than him. Correct? But this is intelligence. That's why to get this real intelligence, we must go to Lord Nityananda Ram. That's the meaning. Not go this way and become an animal. And you cannot find any happiness anywhere, anyway. You can try. You can go here, there, try. No, nothing will come. In this material world, every living entity is desiring some future happiness, which is like a mirage in a desert. Where the wave is the water in the desert? Where is the water in the desert? No. In other words, there is happiness. Where is happiness in the material world? Or as for the body, what is its value? It is merely a source of various diseases. The so-called philosophers, scientists, politicians know this very well. But nonetheless, they aspire for temporary happiness. Happiness is very difficult to obtain. But because they are unable to control their senses, they run after the so-called happiness of the material world and never come to the right conclusion. This is the position of all of us. Because we don't know where to find the real happiness. The real happiness is Nithai Pada Kamala. That's why we sing this Nithai Pada Kamala. Hmm? Yes. So, uh, this is the thing. You cannot change a person by going through straight laws or morally educating him or, you know, putting him in jail and all this is not work. A person's heart can only be changed if he meets up with a pure devotee of the Lord. Even if it's the law of the law, they can become purified. You know? Yeah. But it says here in this verse, uh, even people who are coming from very low background, hmm, they become purified simply by taking shelter of the devotees. By taking shelter of the devotees, they become purified. They cannot become kirata, kirata, kundra, pulika, pulaksa. Huh? This verse, you see, I show you as before I go on again. Kirata, kirata. Tumandas. So here it is, see this verse 2418. Yeah, you can see. Kirata, Huna, Andhra, Pulinda, Pula, Pulkasa, Abhira, Sumba, Yavana, members of the Kasa, even others addicted to sinful acts, 
can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord due to his being the supreme power. I beg to offer my respectful obeisance unto him. The only way you can get purification of your heart is to take shelter of the devotees of the Lord. Hmm? Also, it is says here also, in other words, same thing, law spoken by Lord Brahma. You see how everything is so much explained. Uh, but people know, they don't know. And that's why they are suffering like anything. They are suffering uh, is so much problem. They are suffering like anything still. They are not interested in learning. Hmm? What to do? Yes. Oh. See here. Again. And this was. Again, here you see. Surrendered souls, even from groups leading sinful lives such as women, laborer, class, mountainers, the sabras, even the birds and bees can also know about the signs of God and become liberated from the clutches of the illusory energy of the Lord by surrendering to the pure devotees of the Lord and by following in their footsteps in devotional service. So, see, so anybody. And everybody can become purified by the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu, who then will bring to the devotees, just like Krishna Das Kaviraj said, he sent me to Vrindavan, and there I met Rupa, Sanatan, Raghunath Das, and then Madan Mohan. I got the shelter a lot, who is engaged in the Rasalila. See how he's explaining his personal example? Hmm? So this is the only way the living entity can get tamed, if it all wants to be tamed. What are they doing? What are they doing? Nitaina bolilo muke. Saying they do not know Nityananda is. They never say the name of Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. Majilo samsara suke. Majilo means become absorbed. Uh, they become since they do not know uh, the names of Latyananda and Lord Chaitanya, Majilo means become absorbed. They become absorbed in so-called material enjoyment. They don't care for Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda, and therefore they go deep down to material existence. Vidyakule ki koribe tar. If one has no connection with Nityananda, he does not become, he does not come to Krishna consciousness. His vidya is so-called in academic education uh, and kula, birth in high family or nation will not protect him. Uh, this is the big problem. This is the big problem. Regardless of whether one is born a very big family or nation or very advanced in academic education, at the time of death, nature's law will act. His work will be finished and he will get another body according to that work. So this education, this everyone is thinking this education is so important. This is Vidya. Hmm? Yeah. Many times we have explained this education, so-called education. This materialistic education is simply a waste of time. Hmm? My dear king, the entire world is covered with sharp points of pusa grass, and on the strength of this, you have become proud because you have killed various types of animal in sacrifice. Because of foolishness, you do not know that devoid 
that you not know that devotional service is the only way one can please the supreme personality of god it you cannot understand this you cannot understand this fact your activities uh, should be those that can please the personality of god it our education should be such that we become elevated to krishna consciousness that is the purpose of education education means to become krishna conscious it is not meant for material to to get educated to enjoy the senses you understand we should not use our so called material gain for sense gratification and that's what we are trying to do we are trying to get become educated so that we can enjoy our senses better that's all it is but here it is otherwise stressed education should be such that it should become elevated to krishna consciousness that's the purpose of this education hmm? you understand this point Hmm? Sri Hari, the supreme personality of Godhead, is the super soul and guide of all living entities who have accepted material body within this world. He is the supreme control of all material activities in the material nature. He is also our best friend, and everyone should take shelter of his lotus feet. In doing so, one's life will become auspicious. Can someone help read the purport, please? Any volunteers? Hello. In Bhagavad Gita eight eighteen dot sixty one, it is said, "Ishvara Sarva Bhuta Nam Rideshi." The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna. The living entity is within the body and the super soul. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is also there. He is called Antaryami and Chaitya Guru. As Lord Krishna states in Bhagavad Gita 15 or 15, He is controlling everything. I am seated in everyone's heart and from me come remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. Everything is being directed by the super soul within the body. Therefore, the better, better part of valor is to take his direction and be happy. To take his directions, one need to be a devotee. And this is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 10.10. To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Although the super soul is in everyone's heart, he talks only to the pure devotees who constantly engage in his service. In Chaitanya Bhagavatam, it is said, one who, who has fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna is to be understood as having the best education and as having studied all the Vedas. There are also other appropriate quotes in Chaitanya Bhagavata. The perfect result of an education is the fixing of one's mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. Conquering the world by means of material education is not desirable. If one engages himself in devotional service, his education is perfected. The purpose of education is to understand Krishna and his devotional service. If one does not do so, then education is false. Being cultured, educated, very active, and religious means developing natural love for Krishna. Everyone has dormant love for Krishna. And by culture and education that has to be awakened, that is the purpose of this Krishna consciousness movement. One, once Lord Chaitanya asked Sri Ramananda Raya what the best part of education was. And Ramananda Raya replied that the best part of education is advancement in Krishna consciousness. So you can see here... <clears throat> That material education is simply a waste of time. It's simply a waste of time. 
because he makes you an animal. That's what he does. This material education makes you an animal. Can you read this for me? We think that we have met your goodness by the will of providence, just so that we may accept you as captain of the ship for those who desire to cross the difficult ocean of Kali, which deteriorates all the good qualities of a human being. The age of Kali is very dangerous for the human being. Human life is simply meant for self-realization. But due to this dangerous age, men have completely forgotten the aim of life. In this age, the lifespan will gradually decrease. People will, gen will gradually lose their memory, finer sentiments, strength, and better qualities. A list of the an anomalies for this age is given in the 12th canto of, his, of this work. And so this age is very difficult for those who want to utilize this life for self-realization. The people are so busy with sense gratification that they completely forget about self-realization. Out of madness, they frankly say that there is no need for self-realization because they do not realize that this brief life is but a moment on our great journey towards self-realization. The whole system of education is geared to sense gratification. And if a learned man thinks it over, he sees that the children of this age are being intentionally sent to the slaughterhouses of so-called education. Learned men, therefore, must be cautious of this age, and if they at all want to cross over the dangerous ocean of Kali, they must follow the footsteps of the sages of Naimi Saranya and accept Sri Sutta Goswami or his bona fide representative as a captain of the ship. The ship is a message of Lord Sri Krishna in the shape of the Bhagavad Gita or the Srimad Bhagavatam. So you can see here, this education, so-called education that we are so much uh, glorifying is nothing but a slaughterhouse. And not only that, it is the teaching place of atheism. Children are started on their own start to reject God. They are taught about science and there are so many other stupid things which were uh, intentionally, what do you say, uh, breeding, is breeding this atheism in the mind of all these young people. And I can see I have also observed many of the children of the so-called devotees, they all end up rejecting the process of Krishna consciousness, eventually. Why? Eight to twelve hours a day, 365 days a year, for 20 years, they are indoctrinated. There's no God, there's no God, there's no God. Or if there's God, he's not so important. And how you expect the person to become a devotee? That's why Nityananda Prabhu, Vidya Gule, your education. That's why even Bhakti Vinod Thakur has sung, all my education, it has just made me an ass. There's a song he has written, Vidyara Vilase, you know. I've become an ass by following all this education system. Acharya is speaking. And we know more than Acharya. No, 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 no. My children is not going to become like that. Huh? Understand? Yes. No God consciousness. Come on Sunday and learn for two minutes and you think you're going to become a very big devotee? Yeah? Tell me. Hello? No, Prabhuji. Tell me. And you're putting all kind of nonsense in the head of these kids and what you will become? A saint like Narada Muni? Hello? Anas Prabhu. Yeah? 
You become an ash. Alas. You become an ash. That means you are responsible. It says here, you are responsible. If you don't do this and help, then you are responsible. You are the culprit, you know. Understand? One should not. It says here, one should not become a father and mother. Guru nasa syat, swajano nasa syat, pita nasa syat, janane nasa syat, devam na tatsyan na patischana chasyam na mochayat yaha samupetya murtyam. And as well as he says, one who cannot deliver his dependence from the path of repeated birth and death should never become a spiritual master, a relative, a father, a husband, a mother, a worshipful demigod. You are responsible. You are responsible. Don't give me anything else. You are a rascal because you are sending your dear children to, a, to, to this slaughterhouse education and making a mess of their life by not becoming Krishna conscious. You are the culprit. Yes? Hello? Yes, huh? yes, yes why? Why nobody joining the temple? No, 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 no. Don't go to religion. No, 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 no. You study first, study first. That's what you say. That's why the temple is all empty. Yeah? The most important thing they're supposed to do? No. Don't do this. No, no, no. Don't go. Correct? Okay. Yes. Yeah. This is the problem. This is the serious problem. Yeah. And then what it is? Sometimes we are all coming from some crazy Brahmin family background or some, you know, big rich family background. Kula. Kula means you know, some some very, uh, you know, aristocratic family, you know. What is the use? Huh? What is the use of that? Bhagavad Bhakti Hinasya Jati. This is the aristocratic birth, huh? Jati, Jati. Sastram Japas Tapaha. Aprana is seva dehasya mandanam loka ranjanam. It says here, for a person who divides a devotional service, birth in a great family or nation, birth in a great family or nation, knowledge of, of the revealed scriptures, performance of austerities and penance, and chanting of Vedic mantras are all like ornaments on a dead body. If a person is devoid of Krishna consciousness, all the so-called uh, attributes are considered like ornaments on a dead body. That's all it is. Such ornaments simply serve the concocted pleasure of the general populace. That's all it is. Oh, my son is a doctor, but my wife is married to some rascal. Eh? Prabhu, oh, we have finally ended up in Singapore, America. Eh? Correct? Yes. And what they do? They become the worst of the worst of the debauchees. Eating meat, womanizing, you know, gambling, eh? what not? Intoxicated. Very pathetic because no devotional service, because they are not taking shelter of Nityananda Prabhu. This is the problem because they have overlooked the position of Nityananda Prabhu. And what will be the end result? They simply will get another body 
according to their work. As I've said, you become an animal, you live like an animal, you become an animal. Or even worse, become a ghost. Uh, no body, roam around like a crazy fool. Hmm? It is that, yeah. Those who are in the modes, uh, those who live like that, they become like that. Huh? Not that they don't become like that, they become like that. Huh? Correct? Bhagavad Gita Krishna said, One who dies in the mode of passion, he takes birth among those engaged in fruitive activities, and when one dies in the mode of ignorance, he takes birth in the animal kingdom. Animal kingdom? So please don't take things that is all a joke, you know. What I'm speaking today is some joke. It's a pastime, Friday night pastime, you know. We are here passing time. Wasting time. Yeah? Yes. It's not going to save you your high birth, so-called high birth, you know. No. It is not. All this birth is just simply a decoration for the dead body. That's all it is. Yeah? Simply waiting to take another birth. Why are these animals acting in this way? Ankara matahoya nitai pada pasariyam. They have become maddened by a false concept of the bodily life. And thus they have forgotten their relationship with Lord Nityananda. Asatya Satya Koramani. Such forgetful person accept the illusory energy as factual. Satyare refers to that which is not a fact. In other words, Maya. Maya means that which has no existence, but is temporary illusion only. Persons who have no contact with Nityananda accept this illusory body as factual. Hmm? This is explained also in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also said the same thing. Hmm? So this is how it is explained. Such liberated person are not attracted to material sense pleasure, but is always in trance enjoying the pleasure within. In this way, the self-realized person enjoys unlimited happiness for he concentrates on the Supreme. Whereas the person who is not, he is like trying to get pleasure externally. Huh? The so-called external pleasure, an intelligent person does not take part in sources of misery which are due to contact with the material senses. A son of Kunti, such pleasure have a beginning and an end. And a wise man does not delight in them. Huh? I try to understand this verse. So we are doing this. Our whole enjoyment is external. Correct? Huh? We are running after this so-called, you know, like a deer is thinking there's some water outside somewhere. And is running and running and running, looking, getting, trying to get this massage, uh, this mirage of, uh, you know, water somewhere. Huh? So this is how we are also trying. We are trying, you know. Right? Correct? So we think that, no, 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 I am going to succeed. No, 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 I definitely will succeed. Yeah? This is how the living entity becomes completely bewildered. Very, very uh, uh, 
So try to understand this real pleasure is there within the Lord. It is not outside. Oh. Our pleasure is not outside. It is it is there within our heart. That is where the real pleasure is. And unnecessarily we are being entangled and trying to think uh, and think of getting this so-called uh, Sometime in this house or uh, in the sky, Gandhava put the conditioned soul drinks, eats, and has sex. They normally attach it chases of the object of the senses, just as a deer chases a mirage in the desert. This is how it is. He's trying to get pleasure. Hmm? He thinks that the real pleasure is outside there. Uh, so this is what it says. We are thinking that the lotus seed don't take the, there's something better than God consciousness I and mean God consciousness. Because of the sense gratification, he gets bewildered. He thinks this is the real thing. And he starts working so hard to acquire all this so-called, you know, pleasures. Hmm? Working very hard. Very hard, he works hard, he builds up his castle. A purified soul should see that because the conditioned soul who are addicted to sense gratification have falsely accepted the object of sense pleasure as truth, all of their endeavors are doomed to failure. See? They think that this is asatya re satya. They think that this sense gratification is truth. And because they are thinking like that, all their endeavors are doomed to failure. All their endeavors are doomed to failure. It's a fact. Hmm? They think that this is success for them, but no, because they are trapped in this consciousness, everything they do is going to be finished. Huh? And the Lord will destroy all his work, his hard work that he is doing, the Lord destroys it in the form of time. That's why he says in the Bhagavad Gita, time I am destroyer of the world. Because he's thinking this material world is permanent. This is a problem. He's thinking this, all these things that he's working hard to build up. is uh, going to be staying there with him forever and forever. That is his consciousness. Yes? Is it not? Yes? Very unfortunate. This is the unfortunate position of the living entity. Hmm. This is the unfortunate. Therefore, we should not try to take this material, false material world as the real thing and try to run around like this crazy deer after this mirage in the desert. Ah. This material world is not 
fact. It is not fact. Narutam Das Thakur then said, Nitere Karuna Hebe, Braja Radha Krishna Prabhu. If you actually want to approach the association Radha Krishna, you must achieve the mercy of Lord Nityananda first. When he's merciful towards you, then you will be able to approach Radha and Krishna. Daro Nita Charana Du Kani. Narutam Das Thakur advised that one firmly catch the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Hmm? Then she says again, Nitai Charana Satya. One should not misunderstand and think that he has caught hold of Maya. Similarly, the lotus feet of Nityananda may also be something like that of a Maya or illusion. Therefore, Narutam does confirm Nitai Charana Satya. The lotus feet of Nityananda are not illusion, they are a fact. Taraka Sevaka Nitya. And one who engages in the transcendental loving service of Nityananda is also transcendental. If one engages in the transcendental loving service of Nityananda in Krishna consciousness, he immediately achieves his transcendental position on the spiritual platform, which is eternal and blissful. Therefore, he advises Nitai Pada Sada, Koro Asa, always try to catch the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. So here, this is points are explained here, this is points. So here, by cultivating philosophical knowledge, one can understand his spiritual position and thus be liberated. And performing sacrifice and pious activities, one can achieve sense gratification in a higher planetary system. But the devotional service of the Lord is so rare that even by executing hundreds and thousands of such sacrifices, one cannot obtain it. Krishna does not give this. Uh, Krishna does not give devotional service freely. If a devotee wants liberation or material sense gratification from the Lord, Krishna immediately delivers it. But pure devotional service, he keeps hidden. But pure devotional service, he keeps it hidden. Hmm. The great sage Sugadev said, My dear Maharaj Parichit, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is always ready to serve you, help you. He is your master, guru, god, and very dear friend, and also the head of your family. Yet sometimes he agrees to act as your family servant or order carrier. You are greatly fortunate because this relationship is only possible, uh, is possible only by Bhakti Yoga. The Lord can give liberation mukti very easily, but he does not. But he does not very easily give one Bhakti Yoga because by that process he is bound to the devotee. So Krishna does not give this devotional service so easily. Do not think that you have become a devotee uh, is a cheap thing. Yeah. Understand? He will not give this bhakti so easily to anybody because then he will become their servant. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, however, is very different, has freely given this love of Krishna everywhere and anywhere, even to the most fallen, such as Jagai and Madai. What then to speak of those who are already pious and elevated? This is the difference between Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. They are here to give freely this love that Krishna doesn't give. Hmm. That's why he says, taking shelter of Nityananda Prabhu, uh, it is the facts, it is truth, it's not illusion. 
because they can give you something that even Krishna doesn't give. Hmm? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself is fully independent. Therefore, although it is most confidentially stored benediction, he can distribute love of Godhead to anyone and everyone without concentration. Ah, you understand? He does not care. He just say, give, take. In fact, if you don't even do anything, you see him, you will develop love for God. That is the potency of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hmm. Whether he is offensive or inoffensive, anyone even now chants Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda is immediately overwhelmed with ecstasy and tears fill his eyes. The symptom of a person who is uh, developing pure love for God. Simply by taking, simply by talking of Nityananda Prabhu, simply by talking of Nityananda Prabhu, one awakens one's love for Krishna. Thus, one's bodily limbs are agitated by ecstasy and tears flow from one's eyes like waters of the Ganges. There are offenses to be considered while chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Therefore, simply by chanting Hare Krishna, one does not become ecstatic. If one's heart does not change, tears does not flow from his eyes, his body does not shiver, and his bodily hair do not stand on end as chants, as he chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. It should be understood that his heart is as hard as iron. This is due to his offenses at the lotus feet of the Lord's holy name. Simply chanting Hare Krishna Man Mahamantra without offenses vanquishes all sinful activities. Thus, pure devotional service is the cause of love of God. It becomes manifest. When one's transcendental loving service to the Lord is actually awakened, it generates information, transformation in the body such as perspiration, trembling, throbbing of the heart, faltering of the voice and tears in the eyes. These are all spiritual ecstasies, huh? the eighth form of transformation. Sat asta vikara. Sat asta sattvika vikara. As a result of chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one makes such great advancement in spiritual life that simultaneously his material existence terminates and he receives love of God. The holy name of Krishna is so powerful that by chanting even one name, one easily achieves these transcendental riches. If one chants the exalted holy name of the Lord again and again, and yet his love for the Supreme Lord does not develop and tears does not appear in his eyes, it is evident that because of his offenses in chanting, the seed of the holy name of Krishna does not sprout. But if one chants with some slight faith, the holy names of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda, very quickly he cleanses of all offenses. Thus, as soon as he chants the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, he feels the ecstasy of love of God. Even he chants a slight name of Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda. Very quickly he cleans of all offenses. Just see the power of Nityananda Ram and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the independent Supreme Personality of Godhead, is very magnanimous, is greatly magnanimous. Unless one worship him, one can never become liberated. Unless one worships him, one cannot become liberated. You understand? Oh. Oh fools, because you read the Chaitanya Mangala. So you see how important it is that we should worship Nityananda Prabhu. 
without his mercy we cannot go to chaitanya mahaprabhu at all not possible yes we read the story ah krishnadas kaviraj brother rejected nityananda prabhu but he had a lot of faith in chaitanya mahaprabhu but because he offended nityananda prabhu he fell down even though he was worshiping chaitanya mahaprabhu That's why he says, Nityananda Prabhu's lotus feet is full of truth. Catch all of his lotus feet. And how do we catch all of his lotus feet? Uh, we have to think that, oh, where is Nityananda Prabhu and all. Uh, the idea is that we have to have this, performing this deity worship. Hmm? We have to worship the deity, which is non-different. Huh? understand when my mother my devotees always see the smiling face of my form which are like eyes uh, which eyes like the rising morning sun they like to see my transcendental various transcendental form which are all benevolent they also talk favorably with me mayavadis and atheists accept the form of the deity in the temple of the lord as idols but devotees do not worship idols come on please uh yeah. they directly worship the supreme personality of godhead in his archer form they directly worship the supreme personality of godhead in his archer form in other words the deity and the lord are non different archer refers to the form which can we can worship in our present condition actually in our present state is not possible to see god it is not possible in a spiritual form because our material eyes and senses cannot conceive of a spiritual form not possible because we have contaminated consciousness we cannot see the material the spiritual form of the individual soul even don't speak about god we can't even see ourselves when a man dies we cannot see how the spiritual form leaves the body that is the defect of our material senses in order to be seen in order to be seen by our material senses the supreme personality of god had accept a favorable form which is called archa vigraha this archa vigraha sometimes called the archa incarnation is non different from him just as the supreme personality of god had accept various incarnation it takes the form made of matter clay wood ah uh, and jewels this are uh, many instruct shastrik injunction which are given which give instruction for carving the form of the lord now we simply carve out of some mental speculation uh, go and employ some sculptor and just do some nonsense his forms are not material if god is all pervading then he is also in the material element there is no doubt about it but the atheists think otherwise although they preach that everything is god when they go to the temple and see the form of the lord they deny that he is god god in their own theory everything is god then why is the deity not god actually they have no conception of god this devotee's vision however is different their vision is smeared with the love of god it soon as they see the lord in a different form the devotees become saturated with love for they do not find any different between the lord and his form in the temple as do the atis chaitanya mahaprabhu when he went to jagannath puri he fainted by seeing the lord he fainted yeah there is a difference that we are seeing yeah because their faith is not there hmm yeah the smiling face of the deity in the temple is helped by the devotees as transcendental and spiritual and the decoration of the body of the lord is very much appreciated by the devotees is a duty of the spiritual master to teach how to decorate the deity in the temple how to clean the temple how to worship the deity these are different there are different procedures and rules and regulations which are followed in temples of vishnu 
and devotees go there and see the deity, the vigraha, the spiritual, and spiritually enjoy the form, because uh, all of the deities are benevolent. The devotees express their mind before the deity, and many instances the deity also gives answers. One, but one who must be, but one must be very elevated devotee in order to speak, to be able to speak with the supreme Lord. Sometimes the Lord informs the devotee through dreams. These exchanges of feeling within the deity and the devotees are not understandable by atis, but actually the devotee enjoys them. Kapila Muni is explaining how the devotees see the decorated body and face of the deity and how they speak with him in devotional service. So this is how we can get shelter of Nityananda. We should worship Sisi Gonitai. And we should touch their feet. Mm. And then we drink the water that is washed from their feet, this Channamrata. All these things are designed to get us out of this material nonsense and go back to the transcendental love and service of the Lord in the spiritual world. And we neglect this worship of Nityananda Prabhu then everything is finished. That's why Naratam Das Thakur says, please keep me at your lotus feet. Yeah? He says, please keep me at your lotus feet. Yeah. Yeah. He, says, he wants to be on the lotus feet. He says, I'm very unhappy. That's why we're all unhappy. Narutam Borodukhi, Narutam Das Thakur, the Acharya has taken the position and he's very unhappy. Actually, he's representing ourselves. She says, My dear Lord, I'm very unhappy. Nitai boro, nitai moro koro suki. Therefore, I'm praying to Lord Nityananda to make me happy. Ranko, rako, ranga, charanere, pasa. Please keep me in a corner, not even in the middle, and the, truly at the corner of your lotus feet. See how important it is. And by worshipping, uh, by worshipping, by chanting Hare Krishna, as I many times explain, uh, very time I explain, Krishna mantra haite habe samsara mochana, Krishna nama haite pabe krishna re charana. Simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, one can obtain freedom from material existence. Indeed, simply by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, one will be able to see the lotus seed of the Lord. That's why our chanting is not some imaginary, manakalpana. It is not some illusion, you know. No, no, no. It is factual because it will bring you to the lotus seed of Lord Nityananda and Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna. No doubt about it. Don't doubt this. You understand? Don't doubt. Because if you capture the lotus feet of Krishna, then everything is finished. Then you have reached uh, to the topmost position. Understand? You have reached the topmost position of Krishna's lotus feet is the topmost. And when you get devotional lotus feet of Krishna, then one seriously engage in devotional service of the personality of God at fixing the Lord's lotus feet within one heart. As the goal, only goal of life, one can destroy the innumerable impure desires lodged within the heart as a result of one's previous fruity work within the three modes of material nature. And the heart is thus purified one can directly perceive both the Supreme Lord and oneself as transcendental entities. And thus, one becomes perfect in spiritual understanding through direct experience, just as one can directly experience the sunshine through normal, healthy vision. So, I have covered the whole subject, I think very elaborately. Is there any questions or comments?
Harikrishna Prabhuji, thank you very much. <clears throat> this is really very, very uh, enriching. Uh, devotees are requested if they have any questions or feedback, please do come forward. I'm sure there will be no question. I understand that. <laughs> I don't think Hare anyone. Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. I offer mm. my respectful obeisances unto you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Uh, Prabhuji, I have no questions, but I would like to talk about, I mean, I would like to express what I felt, uh, Prabhuji. Mm. Uh, actually, when when we attended one of Tattvavita Das Prabhuji's classes, in that uh, Prabhuji mentioned, like, you went to uh, Badrina temple there you saw that view of the temple and there you felt very happy and I mean a blissful transcendental bliss but you were all, I mean, suddenly you felt you realized what am I doing here I should go and preach yeah I was there you know, I was sitting on the sidewalk and chanting my rounds and because I was chanting around with all the babas on my side people came and threw coins at my feet you know they oh. think that I was also begging for money, you know. Okay. So then I, although I finished my tour all these four days, uh, Yamuna, Yamuno tree and Gango tree and, and uh, what is that? Is Lord Shiva's place. Uh, what is that place? Lord Shiva's place up there. Kedarnath. 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 And then finally I came to this uh, Badrinath, you know. Then I, I, although I was there and, you know, very nice, the view is so good, the mountain, this, that, and so peaceful and everything. But I was feeling empty, you know. I was thinking, this is not what I want. I want to preach, you know. Because the happiness of preaching Krishna's name and glory is so sublime. Just like now we heard, you know, how so much uh, enthusiasm, correct? Yes, Prabhupada. We all, many of us don't even know the fact of how important it is to worship Lord Nityananda. Yes? Yes. Eh? In fact, many a time we overlook. Yes, Prabhupada. Yes. Not know the glory. That's why we must hear. Hearing, preaching, it's so important. Then your faith will become so strong that very quickly, very, very quickly, you will attain love for Krishna. If you go on the right way, with the help of the right association. That's very important. Yes, you know? Prabhuji. Therefore, there's nothing that can ever can make our heart very happy. That's why Krishna even said, the preacher, they're very, very dear to me. Even the pure devotees, they come down from the first class to the second class for because they want to preach. Yes. Yes, Prabhupada. Prabhupada, I mean, Prabhupada, when he was in the you know room at four o'clock, some usually he gets some guests to come and he will be talking. No, have you noticed that his evening session? Huh? So when there's nobody, he will call his servant. He will make them sit down and he will preach to them. So Prabhupada <laughs> said, "No, I must preach." Then only I'll, you know, I'll be happy preaching Krishna consciousness. See how Prabhupada does it? So talking about Krishna and hearing about Krishna is very important. Extremely important. In fact, Prabhupada told us, even there's nobody who comes to your program, you preach to the four walls. So this supply method of hearing and chanting about Krishna's glory is not cannot be uncomparable. You know? Although yes, sometimes we have heard it a million times, but when we hear again and again, 
Uh, so I told you, I'm speaking this class, I think to this is the fourth time in the week, you know. And still, I am not uh, in any way become bored. Correct? Yes. That's the power of preaching. Yes? Yes, Prabhupada. All of you, all of you must become preachers. And all of you must repeat what you have heard. Then our ISKM glory will go beyond any, you know, any limit. Will be. We will go to every town and village and capture everybody's heart. And the mercy of the Lord will be flowing to everybody. Not it's only restricted to me. Every one of you must become responsible. In order to get that responsibility, you must have Guru and Krishna's mercy. Guru and Krishna's mercy. Guru, the supreme Guru, the topmost Guru. Who is that? Guru Gauranga, we say. Who is that Guru? Nityananda, Nityananda Prabhu. Yes. He is the chief of all Gurus. So we must get his mercy. Yes? Yes, Prabhuji. Um, Prabhuji, uh, Srila Prabhupada has given everyone uh, Krishna, means like touchstone, whoever he touches, he used to give Krishna to everyone. Just like uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada, you are also like touchstone for us, Prabhuji. Whoever you are touching, everyone, you are making them Srila Prabhupada's disciple. And you are giving that spiritual strength as well, just like Nitai Prabhu has given. You are nourishing all of us, everyone, whoever coming in contact with you also, you are also giving us a lot of strength spiritually so that we can also fight um, against non-devotees easily by showing all the verses. This is the proper, uh, what we say, blessing of a disciple. He must get enlightenment. If you are a proper disciple of Prabhupada, means you must get enlightenment. Understand? Yes. It's not simply you sit beside the spiritual master and, you know, massage his leg day and night. Spiritual master is not pleased by that. Spiritual master is happy to see the disciples are enlightened with transcendental knowledge. So, therefore, there is a unique thing about ISKM. All of you are thoroughly educated on the verses of Prabhupada books. Not only the verses, you have also been uh, trained to, you know, uh, realize the importance of, you know, all the information Prabhupada has given in his books, you know. And this is be our success. So, okay, I guess all of you, please take it a little seriously. And take shelter of Nityananda Ram, worship him, you know, it's simply by chanting Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Shri Gora Bhakta Vanda and cry to Nityananda Prabhu to help us reach the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes? Yes, Prabhuji. So, okay, I think uh, anybody else have anything else to add? <coughs> All right, then, okay, I suggest then please accept my humble obeisances. Vancha kalpata rubyascha, kripa asindu vevacha, patitanam pavanebhyo, vaishnavebhyo, namo namaha. All glories to all of you.